What the fuck is up, world? Bialy, Atlantic back. Back in this bitch. Another grito. Another podcast for that ass. Been about two and a half weeks now since the last podcast. And in the meantime, I'm not going to apologize for not dropping one. I know I said the goal at the beginning of the year was once a week. But you know what? Shit happens, dog. And it just played out this way that it was actually, you know what? In the interest of full disclosure, I actually did record. Um, the, I actually did prepare, I should say, the podcast that I should have dropped last week to keep it out a week. I had already prepared it. It's right there. It's written. It's ready to go. <laughs> okay. But the reason I didn't drop it is because it was on some more Mikhail Foucault type shit. You know what I mean? And honestly, after editing up all the clips for the previous uh, podcast, the Carceral Archipelago, um, I was kind of over. I was just over it already. It's just, you know, that's how your boy does. Like, you know, short attention span, hyper fucking focus on when, like, when I'm, you know, on some shit. And uh, yeah, I kind of just put it by the wayside because I was, you know, just honestly, besides the, the two aforementioned reasons, uh, the identity politics aspect of it really just started to fucking annoy me because I cannot emphasize this enough just how much I truly hate identity politics. I think it's the fucking weakest bitch ass shit ever. And it is the fucking lamest excuse for a philosophical argument to ever be had. Um, which is interesting because this particular podcast is going to be predicated on, of all things, identity politics to an extent, okay? Um, this is the Aslan podcast, okay? Well, I should be more clear. This is the introduction to the Aslan podcast because as I was preparing this particular podcast, um, I realized again, the message the message remains, okay? The message was twofold, of course, obviously the first of which was, you know, well, I guess I'll go in, in, in descending order. Second of the two was that I need to start putting these bitches out more consistently, right? Um, which I've still failed to do, but I have a whole year still to catch up until December 31st to catch up on 52 podcasts for the year. I don't know how many, it's like 12. I got a long ways to go. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, this will be 13 actually. Uh, and the first most important reason was take the time to fucking actually, you know, engage with the material. Don't fucking speed through it, bro. And uh, how am I going to fucking speed through? Uh, let's see how many pages book this is. This is actually a dissertation, I think, at that, right? Um, but this book itself is 220 pages, right? And it's heavily, heavily, heavily. Uh, you can't even see. It's for those of you who are watching on the YouTubes, okay? For those of you who are watching on the YouTubes, here's a book right here. For those of you who are just listening, it's called Creating Aslan by Dylan Miner. Lowriding, uh, what is it? Chicano art, indigenous sovereignty, and lowriding across Turtle Island. So for those of you who have ever stumbled upon the gram and wondered to yourself, what the fuck does it mean to be a Chicano philosopher lowriding through uh, Turtle Island? Here you go. This is the podcast where you'll finally learn, okay? Speaking of the gram, if you haven't already, follow your boy. OG underscore ice nice 13 OG dot ice nice 13 because they're coming for me, bro. The gram is coming for me, right? I just had like fucking 15 videos removed for fucking copyright. They're not even videos that I posted. They're videos that I shared um, from other accounts that posted them and I'm, I got flagged for them, right? So you just, you just never know with this fucking, with this technocratic bullshit, right? So, um, yeah, let's just beat her. Let's just, we're no longer, uh, there's no need to beat around the bush, dog. Let's just fucking jump right into it. Okay. Um, creating aslan right it's going to be a little bit of a podcast series and i'm already immersed in myself in a podcast series the modernism versus postmodernism. i haven't forgot but again it's not the attention span because my attention span is relatively focused it's just a desire to talk about that shit like for me i've just this is where i've lived in the last for the last seven years so i'm kind of just like over it as a whole right so i'm trying to go back and revisit it it does demand a lot from me like from a emotional level because i do get invested in it as much as i like to play a cool common collective Obviously, I get invested in the shit that I'm working on because if I wasn't, then I wouldn't be fucking doing it or at least not as passionately as I perceive myself to do, right? So um, the the original series, the modernism versus postmodernism, I'm still on that shit. Don't get me twisted, but this is going to be a little bit of a segue, but it's still going to be immersed in... I'm not trying to overcomplicate, okay? This is all connected. Let's consider this a fucking part two of the series, right? Part one of the series is already complete, and this low-riding shit across Turtle Island, this creating Aslan shit, is in itself a whole nother different fucking podcast series within that particular podcast series, okay? And, you know, the, I guess the best way to put it realistically is that I'm, we're going to be low-riding across this bitch, right? We're not going to race through this motherfucker at all in any way, shape, or form, okay? Much the same way we low-riding across Turtle Island, vibing and styling, you know what I mean? This is the same deal we're going to fucking have, which is the same approach we're going to take with this with the entirety of this podcast, okay? Not just the two series that I'm currently working on, okay? So, yeah, dog. 
No writing across the Aztlan. It's an, it, you know, we recognize first Aztlan as an indigenous Chicano territory. Now, I'm going to qualify this. I'm going to qualify this now and then just fucking never address it again because I've already said it. So to continuously fucking have to repeat it, I don't give a fuck. Like, if anyone gives me any shit, I'll be like, yo, go back and listen to episode 63 of my podcast. It's going to be entitled fucking Creating Aztlan. You can catch it within the first 10 minutes, the fucking qualifying statement. And the qualifying statement is, yes, I am fully fucking, I'm fully aware that the term Aztlan and the idea Aztlan as a whole is extremely problematic within the indigenous community. Because it is only another one of those ways that they feel as though they are being erased from the narrative. Because obviously Aztlan takes up the greater, you know, southwest all the way up to uh, uh, a little bit of the Pacific, what is now the Pacific Northwest, right? And um, all the way down through, you know, current day contemporary modern Mexico, okay? And obviously in between all that land and space are plenty of indigenous peoples. And my intent with this is not at all in any way, shape, or form to fucking shit on them or try to erase them from the narrative or more importantly to uh perpetuate the chicano ideology of uh, aslan erasure okay because this this term aslan really hit prominence with the original chicano movement chicano of the 1970s okay and uh it it was this movement had a lot of flaws okay so in fact that's uh, let me me take this quick moment really quickly because i'm gonna say this these terms not interchangeably because they are two completely different terms and they should be treated as such. Um, the first one I'm going to emphasize heavily. It's going to say the Chicano. Okay. And the second one is going to be the Chicano. Right. And I guess to further, further, further qualify because this is important. I, 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 I promise you it really is. Right. Uh, for the entirety of the idea that I'm going to be, be putting across throughout this fucking podcast series on creating Aztlan. Okay. And that is that, um, I'm going to be interchanging the gendered language, okay? Like, I fucking, again, I hate to be making these fucking bitch-ass identity politics excuses, but just for the sake of covering my own ground in terms of academic space, if you will, in terms of fucking safe spaces for the fucking softies out there, right? Uh, it's not meant to be gender exclusive. So I'm going to use Chicano, Chicana, it's the same shit, okay? Now, the distinction in between the ways that I'm saying it is the chi, the hard chi, okay? Because that is going to be referring to the Chicano movement with a C-H-I, Right? Now, I'm going to, when I refer to the more contemporary Chicano movement that I'm currently, that I identify as, that's going to be with an X, okay? So it's a distinction between the Chicanos and the Chicanos, okay? The Chicanas and the Chicanas, all right? And the distinction here is going to boil down ultimately to the understanding that although we are the same peoples, we have two complete approaches to the process of creating Aztlan. And the first, the most important one is the way that we do approach Aztlan in the first place, right? Now, the way we approach it basically is going to become one of me personally as a Chicano, okay? It's going to come from one of two perspectives. And the first perspective is I'm not entirely convinced that it is an actual ancestral homeland. You know, some people trace it and they place it. Uh, it's actually traced in this book here, a map, right? Um, somewhere in the Utah, Nevada, uh, upper Nevada area. Okay. That's where they say that the original, uh, maps demonstrate where the migration of the, what would become the Mexica Tenoca people of, you know, central, in, uh, 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 what is now Mexico, Turtle Island, right? Um, they trace their, you know, their, their, um, their migration, if you will, to keep faithful to the language that we're going to be using on this podcast from that area of, you know, upper Nevada around Utah and all that area right there. All the way down to indigenous with their, uh, where, you know, central, central, uh, central Mexico, dog, to just use the colonized language, right? Um, and obviously the reason why that's so problematic is because one, people say that this isn't real and so that they, they, they refer to it as an imaginative, uh, land, right? Um, and two, obviously as I've already fucking qualified, there is a lot of space in between, you know, what is now current Utah and upper Nevada and central fucking Mexico. And because of all that space that's there, there's obviously all kinds of indigenous nations that are in between that. So um, the conscientious acknowledgement for me as a Chicano person is that, yeah, dog, I understand that there's a lot of fucking land and peoples and nations in between that. So it's not my intention to fucking shit on you all or erase you all in any way, shape or form. And if you feel that way, allow me to please as sincerely as I can convey to you to fucking through uh, video technology assert with you with utmost intention with utmost sincerity that that is not my intention okay contrast that to the chicanos right with the hard ch and they had no problem saying like yeah this is fucking aslan everything in between this this is all chicano territory 
And, you know, obviously the people that don't identify as Chicanos, they felt some type of way, dog, and rightfully so. So that's my conscientious distinction, one of the many that I'm going to be making throughout the entirety of this podcast series to distinguish, to separate myself from the Chicanos. Um, although I'm thankful for some of the shit that they've done, most of the shit that they've done, they, they're, 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 they're problematic, dog. They really are. But in terms of their views towards, obviously, you know, competing indigenous nations, not even competing. That's not the word I'm looking for because there ain't no competition, dog. We all in this bitch together. But other, other, you know, um, not even other. This is see the language games that you start fucking with when you start delving into this identity politics bullshit. The fellow, if you will, uh, indigenous nations that exist within that space. Okay. Another is their views on women, their views on minor, uh, other, you know, quote unquote minorities, their views on gay and trans peoples, right? Like, I don't fuck with those ideas because basically what those are is it's European colonialism dressed in brown skin, bro. They ain't fucking, you know, they did cool shit for our peoples back in the time when no one else do- was, but it came at the cost of them continuing to, you know, spread their misogyny, their transphobia, their homophobia. Uh, and their outright erasure of others' peoples, right? And I'm not with that, dog. So again, that's, you know, the distinction between the ex, uh, Chicano, Chicana and the CHI Chicanos, right? So with that said, dog, right? The whole point of Las Landen is yes, I'm me personally as a Chicano. I'm not convinced that it isn't an actual place, right? But I'm also equally not convinced that it is. Like it just, I, I see it less as perhaps an ancestral land. Cause I don't need, uh, the reason this is so important is cause we're gonna find here as this podcast progresses, land is critically important when trying to, well, just period in indigenous, in, in indigeneity, right? Land is critically important. Um, but specifically, the reason why it's important in an academic quote unquote sense, the fake woke social justice warrior sense, more like it, is because they like to critique us Chicanos and say, we are not an indigenous peoples because indigenous peoples are still connected to their cultural traditions and more importantly, perhaps the land, right? So they say that since we have no land attached to us, then we are, this is one of the many fucking fake bitch ass arguments they make that because we don't have a land attached to us, that supposedly that implies that we're somehow not indigenous, which is just complete, utter fucking bullshit, right? So, um, yeah, so the second part then is that when we would start to, you know, conceive of Aztlan then is, okay, maybe not so much. It doesn't have to be, is what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be a fucking actual land in order to, uh, uh, you know, uh, assert our indigeneity, right? Uh, but at the same time, it's also beyond the land and more into the realm of what of the idea, the idea of Aztlan. What is Aztlan as an idea? And that's when we start to get into Atlan as an idea, where we start to get into some really fucking cool shit. At least that's what I personally think, right? Obviously, I'm biased, but you know, you know the deal, okay? So when we say then, when I say that I'm fucking low riding across Atlan, dog, all realistically I'm saying is that I under, I recognize Atlan as both an indigenous, uh, Ch- uh, an indigenous Chicano territory, okay, but also as a space that transcends both time. And actual physical understanding of space. I told y'all motherfuckers in previous podcasts, time traveler, fucking not of this time, etc. and so on and so forth. This is the ontology that informs much of those beliefs, okay? Because, you know, we're going to see here, Shikanex identity in general, it's very, you know, fluid for sure, okay? It's the borderlands, if you will, which I'll talk about some other time on a previous podcast because she deserves her props too, for those of you who aren't familiar with her, Anzaldua. Uh, Gloria Anzaldúa, but the idea of borderlands, that, like, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Her ideas, okay? Of the borderland. Um, anyways. So, what I'm saying then is that, yeah, dog, it's, <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm low riding across this motherfucker, not just the ancestral lands, right? But the ideological space. And perhaps more importantly, I'm fucking, I'm low riding across the world, dog. I, I, across all the traditional homelands to the traditional homelands of every motherfucker listening to this podcast, bro. Because you know what? Everyone on this fucking earth is indigenous to somewhere, homeboy. Even English-speaking British people, dog. That's something that the fake woke ju- fucking social justice warriors aren't going to try to hear. English is an indigenous language, you fuck. Suck it up, okay? Um. Anyways, the point that I'm making is that, you know, irrespective of what land you're on, dog, this is the whole earth is indigenous land to somebody, dog, because it's all situated on one planet, okay? And because of that, you're my kin, dog. Like, I'm no, like for real, I'm not trying to front, okay? But... I got motherfuckers listening to this shit literally from all over the world. Not a lot of y'all motherfuckers, but I respect and I appreciate the fuck out of each and every single one of you. And when I say all over the world, like I am, it's not hyperbole. Sometimes I look at the statistics and I'm like, yo, what the fuck? How they listen? How the, how the fuck? Like how? How? 
obviously through social media, I'm imagining, you know what I mean? But how is it possible that some little fucking brown boy from the hood of North Central El Paso, Texas is now talking to some motherfucker out in, you know, XYZ country? Like, that shit's dope as fuck to me, dog. And because of that, I'm not only low riding across Turtle Island anymore, I'm proudly and happily low riding across this planet motherfucking Earth, dog. And it's beautiful to me because honestly, obviously, if you've been following long enough, you know full well, like, I'm not with this divisive nonsense, yo. We up in this, we up in this bitch together, homie, okay? I don't give a fuck. Uh, brown, black, white, gay, straight, trans, whatever, dog. N- fucking Christian, Muslim, Jewish person, Hindu, none of that shit, dog. None of th- billionaire, millionaire, fucking barely getting by, dog. None of that shit means anything to me, bro. I recognize you and me and I and you. There's only one, yo, teot, okay? There's one essence that fucking vivifies and it, elect- it fucking uh, animatizes all of us, dog. We're all one, okay? So to be low riding now at this point all across the world, not just Turtle Island, like it really does mean a lot to me, dog. Okay. <laughs> and um, and it's not just because, you know, this is another argument that these motherfuckers, uh, they're fake woke little liberal, liberal Latino ex dorks, right? They try to critique us with. Uh, they call us hipsters, right? Which is fine. I'll take that charge. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'll gladly admit to being a hipster. Okay. Like, what the fuck? How is that a bad thing? I don't really, I don't, straw man argument bullshit. Okay. Uh, but the truth is, you know, one of the reasons I guess that we can be considered a hipster is because we have the, the privilege. It's a privilege. I'll admit it. Like, no doubt. I don't, have, I don't mind admitting my privileges. It's a privilege to be educated. Right. So um, in this particular sense, they, they were not just the education, the educated part, but also like just our our ability, if you will, because they don't see it as an ability. They see it as a deficit and some like it's a deficit in the sense that we lack. So we're seeking outwards and, you know, reaching for other people's culture. But that's not it, dog. Like. It's part of just being cultured. Like, I, I just, I, cultured. I, like, I, I can quote shit about, you know, uh, Hindu philosophy and not be a culture vulture because the books are there. The fucking, they're sharing you the, with, with you the culture. Like, how is it a culture vulture? And in this particular case, it's, uh, I'm talking about, you know, ahimsa type shit, dog, in Hinduism, where, you know, the divine light in me recognizes the divine light in you. And, you know, just, that's their critique, just, you know, just throwing it out there. Anyways. More specifically, yo, again, I'm talking about Theo, homeboy, right? Uh, again, the recognition that we're all comprised of the same sacred energy and that because of that, we're all fundamentally the same. And the only difference, if any, is the ideas, the ideas that we have about reality, the cultures we were born into, and then so on, uh, or rather, uh, and so on. So instead of considering it like some typical hipster bullshit, I would suggest that instead you consider this a, procla- a proclamation of quote-unquote absolute truth if you will that is a direct affront to you and your folk right and see it for what it truly is let me rephrase that because it came across very sloppy but it's very important to state i'm not trying to emphasize or fucking you know assert right uh instantiate if you will the importance of one culture or another let alone mine okay this is not a proclamation on my behalf of absolute truth what i'm saying is that it's not an affront to you and your folk dog Okay, try to see it less as that and more for what it truly is. And that is the desire for me to share with you our story, okay, as told by us and for us, okay? Azotlen neli in Tlaltic Pak, homeboy. And, you know, the, what does it mean? Azotlen neli in Tlaltic Pak. Is this the only truth on earth and now what? Okay, now obviously, if you ask me, the answer is a resounding no. And to state otherwise, I'll continuously maintain is nothing more than a colonial trick aimed at perpetuating the hierarchies that are antithetical, homeboy, to much of indigenous thought. Now, how does this tie in with the social justice warriors bullshit? Because you're going to see that much of their fuck, if you haven't already, right? But I'll make it perfectly fucking clear that much of their rhetoric, because that's all it is, it's empty rhetoric, is predicated, despite how fucking fake woke they imagine themselves to be, on colonial divisive thinking, right? So, (laughs) what I'm trying to say then is, no, dude, like, no, I don't give a fuck. They can call me whatever they want. They can say I'm not indigenous. They can say I'm just a hipster fuck. They can talk shit about the way that I allegedly culture vulture, all this other kind of shit. But ultimately, what it boils down to is the low riding element, the low riding desire that I have. And that is to cross borders, dog, to connect with other motherfuckers, to share my story and not say mine is the correct one, but that all of our stories collectively are doing nothing more than helping us make sense of this massive mystery fucking called life, dog. Like, no one knows what the fuck is going on. So there might be things of my story 
that can help you. And conversely, there could be things of your story, like the Himsa argument, that can help me because it has tremendously. In fact, before I got deeply in, into the fucking um, uh, indigenous Nahuatl, it was Hindu philosophy that was there for me, dog. So I'm trying to look. I have a bunch of statues. Uh, not here. This is my fucking Nahuatl uh, Miklantec, uh, Miklantec Wheatley uh, cave, right? Santa Muerte. But out and about in the rest of my house, I do have some, dog. And, you know, I, I'm not, not because I'm a culture vulture, but because I recognize Azotle Neli Intlaltik Pak. There is more than one truth on earth. And all these fake woke social justice warriors are trying to do is assert one fundamental truth, which is absolutely fucking hilarious. Okay? Just one of the many reasons why they're so hypocritical. Now, with that said, I think then the best place to start this entire podcast, I'm only on page one. All right? I'm excited for this podcast. I hope you are too. And if you're not, I hope you find one that will make you excited to listen to. Anyways, um, the best place to start, dog, obviously, is with low writing, right? Now, um, for those of y'all that follow along on the gram, and perhaps you've wondered again what the fuck I'm talking about in my bio when I state that I'm a uh, philosopher, low writing across Turtle Island, the obvious answer for those who are unfamiliar with the work that I'm about to uh, talk about on this podcast um, I imagine that the first thought possibly that came to mind <laughs> when you read it was something akin to the idea that I had the first time I read this book and came across it just as a title, right? And that is the obvious correlation of Cholo culture, you know, namely that of a Cholo and a lowrider making their way through life. You probably imagine like some fucking Cholo beard with some lokes and shit, a bald head. I got the white tee on today out of fucking respect, right? No tank top up in this motherfucker under it, right? Um, but just a little bit of a uh, uh, show of respect. I do, don't have the Cortez on either. Maybe I'm just fucking faking the funk. Maybe these bitch ass fake justice, social justice warriors, uh, were correct and I'm just a hipster appropriating my own fucking culture. <laughs> right? But anyways, um, Cholo culture, dog, a little Cholo low riding his way through life, right? And again, on the surface level, you'd be absolutely right to feel as such because that's honestly a large part of what it is, homeboy. Okay? Chicani, or let me be more specific, Chicanidad in general is this insistence, dog, that we are indigenous folk, right? Um, and the reason that's, imp uh, that's important is because besides land now, uh, we, we're starting to get into the actual culture element of what they, these fucking bitch ass fake woke social justice, it's hilarious because they hate Nazis, supposedly they hate Nazis, we've already discussed, they are the fucking Nazis, right? But they're obsessed with racial purity, dog. It's fucking pathological, their obsession with racial purity. They like to say, they they'll put blood quantum on a motherfucker like me, dog. And it's like, yo, isn't blood quantum like one of those things that European peoples introduced to Turtle Island to try to fucking break up the whole, the stronghold that indigenous peoples as a whole had on this motherfucker to divorce and dispossess them of their land? And now you're going to fucking pull that on me because you insist, and yet rather you insist that you're not some fucking puppet walking around from the fucking that's been brainwashed and manipulated and set off into the world by the, you know, institutional academia that is built on and founded by the ideas of those very same fucking Nazis that you pretend to, you know, despise? Like, fuck off, dog, right? Anyways, so the culture part, as I've mentioned plenty of times, these fake woke social justice warriors, dog, they insist otherwise. They're going to tell us, you're not a Chicano, or rather, you're, a Chicano is not a real thing, quote unquote, and it's definitely not indigenous, Right? Because to be indigenous, again, is to be connected to traditional land and culture. And they're going to argue that since we are and have neither, that we are at best of quote-unquote indigenous descent. Now, I say at best because at worst, quote-unquote, for those of you who are just listening, according to them, we ain't shit more than mestizos, dog, which is just a nice way, if you will, saying that we're fucking mutts, basically. Now, I talked about this before on the gram. For those of you who uh, follow along, it'll sound familiar. But for those of you who haven't, you know, who don't, it's basically akin. Like you, you, they, they have no problem, dog. Again, these little fake woke social justice warriors with the little arbitrary identity fucking polemics that they devise. They have no problem, dog, um, calling us, okay, mestizos, which, again, is just a fucking nice way of calling someone mixed, like a mixed blood, like a mutt. Basically, in the context that they're using it, they're calling us fucking mutts, dog. Right. So obviously inherent in the terminology of mud and the word of mud is less pure, less fucking, you know, uh, less of blood, if you will. Again, going back to the fucking blood quantum shit, they're always pulling out. Now, it's hilarious to me because they'll have no problem fucking calling us mestizos and mestizas, but you will never, ever fucking hear them refer to a black person that's mixed as a mulatto. You know what I mean? Because it's fucked up and rightfully so. They shouldn't be calling them mulattoes. And they shouldn't, in the same respect, be calling us fucking mestizos. But they're so fucking lost 
in their little fantasy land that they devise themselves because of the fucking uh, luxuries afforded to them by their petty fucking bourgeoisie life that they don't fucking understand just the same ways that they themselves perpetuate these fucking alleged uh, injustices that they fucking accuse others of doing, right? Now, again, I cannot emphasize enough that I just, I cannot understate the irony, dog. This group that is fucking obsessed with Nazis, dog, fucking pulling blood quantum and insisting on genetic purity, right? But again, we're going to cross that bridge when we get there. For now, for now, the basic point is that, yeah, motherfucker, us Chican, us Chicanx folks, dog, we are in fact indigenous. I have no problem fucking saying that, okay? And no, none at all whatsoever. Settler colonial construct, whether it be the ideas they have created regarding who and what is indigenous, right? And in turn taught them, them, these little fake woke social justice warriors in they schools, right? It doesn't matter what their artificial fucking European borders on our land tell us, right? It doesn't matter what language we're fucking using, the language, their language that they're using to teach us, right? This is the point that I was trying to make earlier when every language is indigenous if you want to be a fucking shithead, even English, right? Um, but obviously now it's an imposed upon language and, you know, it's the language that we're using to articulate these ideas, right? Um, and their culture that's been violently forced on us, dog, on pain of death, mind you. It's not like we fucking willingly accepted this shit. Um, and none of that is ever going to strip us of the fact, dog, that we are, in fact, indigenous peoples to this fucking continent. Now, again, when it comes to this land, then, the answer is simple, dog. We are detribalized folk, okay? And the only reason we're not attached to an ancestral land anymore is because we've been displaced, you stupid fucks. We've been displaced by these colonial forces, chief among which being capitalism. How many times do we fucking have to go through this debate about why people are fucking fleeing, trying to get into this settler colonial country? Because capitalism exploits the fuck out of every other country that's not the United States of America, even the United States of America, but brutally other countries, okay? And of course they're going to want to come here and have to leave their ancestral homes. Like, this is not an argument, dog. It's just showing your fucking ignorance that you don't understand capitalist forces, how dispossession and displacement works, and so on, okay? Um, and on top of that, on top of that, many of the migratory patterns that these people are following Bro, they, those, these patterns have existed. These fucking, tra these roots have existed for tens of thousands of years. Okay. This, this, this country, it's still young compared to the history of our peoples on this continent. It's only fucking 500 years old, dog. Right. Um, and while 500 years is for sure, it's a long time. I can't conceptualize it, let alone tens of thousands of years. It is nothing in comparison. It's but a fucking uh, drop in the bucket of water, dog compared to the ancestral lands that have been traversed by our folk, okay, that predated European contact, again, for tens of thousands of years, right, in order to ensure even then their continued survival, right? This idea, dog, by the way, we're going to have to discuss this fucking idea that the, that the peoples that inevitably settled in, you know, central Mexico were somehow primitive and lost, right, and they were just wandering around following an eagle, that's part of the, you know, that's part of the, the story of traditional Mexica, Tenoca culture. But it also, it, it implies that they were lost and they were primitive. They weren't fucking lost, dog. These, our ancestors, yo, were fucking highly advanced mathematicians. They built the motherfucking pyramids, dog. They have a better calendar that tells better time than this fucking bitch-ass Gregorian calendar that we're using still to this day, okay? These are peoples, uh, they, they built floating gardens, dog, in fucking, a. Uh, 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 a, a swamp basically they made fucking a paradise out of it that made european people marvel in its fucking spectacularness so to assume that they were just these fucking lost wanderers is fucking nonsense dog they were scientists who were following fucking the trajectories of the seasons they were fucking experienced cartographers who were fucking following traditional navigational routes that had been carefully played out or uh, laid out rather for tens of thousands of years before european fucks came onto this continent okay they were fucking navigating using the stars, bro. These are fucking highly intelligent people. They were not lost, okay? Um, so when it comes to culture then, dog, I mean, ah, it's just such a primitive understanding these fucking fake woke social justice warriors have, yo. And it's like, bro, seriously, any introductory to sociology class is going to teach you that culture is not static, dog. Culture is a dynamic force. It's one that is constantly changing in accordance to the material conditions uh, it operates within, as well as the individual desires of peoples that comprise the motherfucking thing, dog, because ultimately it is people that comprise 
cultures. Individual peoples make up the collective whole, and one person can influence an entire culture, dog. Like this is this is introduc this is introduction to fucking <laughs> sociology type shit. I shouldn't even have to explain this to these people who fashion themselves to be so fucking intelligent, right? Look at Kanye West, dog. 808 and heartbreaks. Ever since then, rap, hip hop, general or hip hop or uh, pop, whatever pop culture, hip hop, rap. It's not been the same, dog. Every motherfucker singing with auto tune rapping now. Okay, like this is that one person can dramatically change the entire trajectory of culture because it's constantly changing. Let alone a fucking collective group of people, right? Because again, culture is not this static fucking thing that you just impose upon people, dog. It's a dynamic force. It's constantly changing, okay? And, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just so fucking funny to me, dog. Because to use that argument, like the culture argument, like, oh, you don't have traditional ancestral culture. That, and because of that, you're not indigenous. To me... That's akin to Joe Biden saying that people are black people that don't vote for him aren't black. Like, it's the same fucking argument, dog. And then people are going to be like, why you always got to compare your struggle to the black struggle? I'm not. I'm not. I'm just pointing out the fucking hypocrisies, dog. That, yeah, that's how fucking stupid you sound. You sound like the 80-year-old geriatric fucking senile man saying who's black and who's not. You're fucking only mixing it up with the ideas of those people, right, that are being filtered through your quote unquote brown body to use your fucking language. okay? and you're trying to pass them on to us when it's just outright fucking ridiculousness. dog. It's preposterous. Right. Um, You want to insist that we Chicanx people, right, can't have no culture, but that just it simply couldn't be any further from the truth, dog, because what the fuck is a lowrider, dog? That is part of Chicanx culture. Like, that's a fucking staple. It's an icon. It's the most obvious one, right? And to try to diminish it, by the way, just because it's a fucking car, it's so, so fucking ignorant and naive. It's fucking stupid, dog, because for one, you don't know how to make a car. You definitely don't know how to fix a car. Do you know how to paint the car? And do you know how to fucking fix it up like a, a lowrider? Because I very highly doubt you do, right? Let alone the acquisition of the metals and the process of putting that bitch together. And with that foundation, we start to lay our understanding for what it means to lowride, okay? But again, we got to crawl before we ball, baby. We'll slowly work our way to that part. And before we do, we got to get through the obvious part. Again, I cannot emphasize this enough. Culture is not static. Culture is a dynamic force that is constantly fucking evolving. It's dealt, homeboy. That's all it is, dog. I just, I told you at the beginning, I've been telling y'all motherfuckers, this is what it is. There is fucking one. That's all one. We're monists up in this motherfucker, right? Hood philosophy, the Chicanx culture, Nahuatl culture. I don't want to speak for absolutes, you know what I'm saying? But if we're getting our fucking roots from the fucking Nahuatl peoples, then we're fucking monists, dog. It's that simple. And because of that, we recognize that, you know, it's dealt. There's just one thing. And that one thing this vivifying force is in constant flux. It's a dynamic force. It never sits still. It's not static. It can never be static because if it was static, it wouldn't be Teot. And thus it wouldn't be because everything is Teot. Everything is one, homeboy. Everything is everything. Okay? So to say that fucking Chicanx peoples are not fucking indigenous because we don't have traditional culture is not a fucking insult, dog. It's an understanding that, yeah, dog, time unfolds. Teot unfolds. New peoples and new cultures emerge through this process, okay? And because of that, that doesn't take away any of your indigeneity. It's in our fucking essence, bro. We are what we are. Look at my brown skin. It might be a little too light skin for some of y'all motherfuckers, right? But it's beautiful nonetheless, okay? And it does not, it's, it's as light skin as it may be, it will never fucking strip me of my indigeneity because the whole color spectrum that y'all motherfuckers hold is colonial in nature so fuck off with your fake woke bullshit okay i'm fucking over it dog one of the most iconic examples of this of course lowrider culture yo and this is exactly where this dylan minor cat picks up his work yo he's telling us that for many participants in lowrider culture the process of lowriding it engages traditional migration patterns yo like we've been walking this fucking slippery earth homeboy this shit ain't new and now we're just lowriding across this motherfucker okay and doing so by employing late capitalist machinery to traverse colonized spaces, dog. These motherfuckers, I'm telling you, they want to see us locked up, yo. Just like the kids in the cages now. These motherfuckers being the fucking colonialists, yo. The lizard people over at Repti uh, fucking Illuminati headquarters, if you will, right? They don't want to see us on this continent, homeboy, okay? They don't want to see us, period. They've tried everything. They tried fucking killing off our ancestors so that we couldn't be here. They tried fucking removing the reproductive organs of our mothers and grandmothers, okay? 
They tried locking us up in they motherfucking for-profit prisons, and we still up in this bitch. This is our continent. This is our land. Y'all motherfuckers are just visiting, okay? And if we're being completely honest, if we're being completely honest, then because of that, low riding is then, it's a revolutionary act. It's a revolutionary act, dog. It's one that flaunts this boring-ass traditional American culture, yo. And it fully, completely embraces its indigenous counterpart. You know, just look at the vibrancy of the color, dog. Look at the fucking flair and the, dynam the, the, the dynamism. This is in complete stark contrast to that boring-ass Protestant fucking fucking christian culture from england yo like this is fucking a culture of life it's one of animation it's one of movement okay um now again i'm not here to fucking completely shit on and dismiss uh, european cultures introduce cool shit too dog all right um a lot of it before in my personal opinion christianity washed up on your shores too right i love like fucking melodic death metal i've told you this before dog i love black metal you know this shit and what I love most about it is that they don't, <laughs> black metal especially, they were burning motherfucking churches down. Like, how much more G can you get than that, right? Why? Because they recognize Christianity as a foreign force that was invading and taking over your traditional European cultures. Black metal, they embrace, or death metal, melodic death metal, uh, they embrace the fucking Viking culture. Like, I, I, I fucks with all that kind of shit. Like, that shit's dope to me, okay? That life right there in and of itself is also full of vibrancy and color and vitality. Not this fucking... Bitch ass Christian fucking slave morality bullshit. Okay. Um, now, in terms of, you know, just to further this the argument though, while European culture values, for instance, hastening from, let's be very clear, Christian culture, dog, Christian Protestant work ethic. Let's be fucking absolutely clear because, like I said, I'm not, I'm not with that divisive bullshit, dog. So I'm not just going to fucking broad stroke all Europeans. But I will say that those motherfuckers, <laughs> those of y'all who are still living under the fucking, oppressive thumb of the protestant work ethic then that probably definitely applies to you okay um break free homeboy embrace your fucking traditional nordic roots if you're fucking up in europe somewhere right uh, if you're here on turtle island break free homeboy break free of those fucking bitch ass protestant work ethic virtues and embrace your full indigenous value dog and one of them specifically when it comes to you know the chica chica next people is it's the low riding dog. We're not fucking in a rush to get from one place to another, okay? We taking our time up in this motherfucker, right? We don't hasten to and fro. We don't even show up on what y'all consider to be time. We run on Chicano time, homeboy. I'm fucking late everywhere I go. And when I show up, the answer is always simple. I'm, I'm on Chicano time, dog. I'm on Chicano time. You want me at a party at 6 o'clock? You better tell me that bitch starts at 4. You want me there at 6 o'clock? You better fucking tell me that bitch starts at 8, okay? And that's being super generous. It's time is like a loose thing, yo, and it's one that we embrace fully because we're not in a fucking rush. If you show up to my crib, dog, if I got a party at six o'clock and you show up to my spot at five thirty, I'm thinking because you're in a rush to get the fuck on. You know, you're just trying to leave. OK, to for me personally, when someone shows up, I tell them, yo, the party's at six. I, if they show up anywhere before that, I'll probably I'll be even more fucking annoyed because I'm like, yo, like I'm not even I'm not even ready for this. yo. like I said six. So eight motherfucker, you got to go. Some, you got to go find something to do for two hours yo, because I'm still getting ready up in this motherfucker. OK. And when you do show up at the fucking Ch in, Chica in Chicano time, I know it's because you appreciate me and you fuck with me and you say, yo, like I have nothing more to do today. Like my intention is entirely yours. Like I've blocked this motherfucker off for the rest of the day. Okay. We're here. We're this, 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 you and me, this is us. We're here up in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, oh, well, it's 6.30 and I got to be gone by 7 o'clock because I got five other parties to go to. And this is the first one I stopped to because it's the least important. Like fuck that shit, dog. I'm not with that shit. Okay. Um, the same is true with work and productivity. Like, y'all, this fucking whole nine to five shit, it's killing you motherfuckers. It's killing us, okay? I've worked that bitch before. I've worked that grind before. I know full well that shit sucks. Deluxe, okay? Like, it's fucking terrible, right? Um, but that's what y'all motherfucking Protestant work ethic motherfuckers introduced to this bitch. This is not life before y'all motherfuckers got here. It was completely different, and it can be completely different, okay? We gotta work to fucking change it. It's not gonna just fucking be given to us. These fucking Protestants got their fucking hooks in deep. Okay, and they don't want to let go, dog. But that Protestant work ethic shit, like you might value that productivity. I gotta be, I gotta be on the grind from nine to five every day in order to make sure my life has meaning and value. Fuck off, yo. That's fucking bougie Christian conservative values, yo. I don't, we don't fuck with that in Chicano culture. It's just, yo, like it is what it is, dog. I fucking low ride through my day. I have a fucking a, a, a loose schedule, if you will of things that I like to do. Sometimes I, most of the time I do do them. And sometimes when I don't get to do them, uh, you know, you just fucking keep riding, dog. Cause fuck it, who cares? Siempre pa' delante, homeboy. Okay, that's some shit my grandpa taught me. I know I said it before, but 
you don't let the small shit or the big shit at that matter fucking get you back. You keep low riding across this motherfucker, okay? So yeah, I got a loose schedule. Like today, for instance, um, I didn't go to jujitsu. My schedule, the, the loose schedule that I have right now during this fucking online teaching that I'm doing because of the ongoing pandemic is I'll wake up, be at the gym, I'll wake up 5.30 in the morning, be at the gym by 6 o'clock, right? Gym is over, lifting weights by 7 o'clock. It's a class, right? The class is over by 7 o'clock. From 7 to fucking 8.30, dog, I got I got time to chill. I'll finish my breakfast that I started in the morning. I'll drink another coffee, right? I'll fucking look up some memes and shit, okay? Let's get ready to share them on the gram later in the day. And then I'll go to jujitsu, dog. I'll go to jujitsu from, from 9 to 10, okay? Then from about 10, when the class ends to about 10.30, I'll shoot the shit with the homies, okay? And then I'll fucking gradually make my way back home. It's a very privileged life. I'm not trying to stun on you. I'm not trying to front on you. I'm just telling you like that. It's, I understand it's privileged, okay? I'm not fucking dumb. I'm just saying, like, that's that's the life I chose. Yo, I fucking gambled like a motherfucker, dog. I, I majored in philosophy, okay? That was a huge fucking gamble, homeboy, right? Thankfully, it has paid off thus far. And because of, the again, the ongoing pandemic, that's why I'm uh, fucking afforded that possibility. So, again, I'm not trying to front on you. I'm just telling you, like, that's the life of a college fucking professor at the moment. That's my morning, right? So I get home around fucking 11 o'clock, right? And I'll just, I'll just chill, dog. I'll chill. I'll make another breakfast. I'll fucking shoot the shit with my girlfriend. I'll fucking hang out for like another two hours maybe sometimes, right? And then, and then I'll slowly make my way into my little fucking, uh, my study, if you will. My fucking layer devoted to uh, Ma- uh, Santa Muerte, the madre, right? Um, and I'll start reading and researching, chopping up some videos for the fucking gram. I'll start fucking podcasting, whatever, until later on in the evening when it's time to do some more shit, dog. Like, that's, I understand, again, a very privileged life, a very fucking luxurious life, you know, considered the... the not luxurious in the American 1% way, but luxurious in the global 1%. Like, I'm fully aware of that and thankful for that, okay? Uh, I give thanks for that every single day. But the point I'm trying to make is, like, it's not a 9 to 5 grind, dog. It's fucking, you know, I do what I do when I do what I do, okay? Like, there's no rush to finish. There's no rush to get from point A to point B. I'm fucking just, I'm low riding through the motions, dog. I'm enjoying the process, right? Back in the day before I learned about, ho- about low riding, I had a homie in graduate school. He's a homie, but he's already he's already in his 70s, dog. But I met him when he was in his 60s, right? Um, he was like in his late 60s, he was like 65 when I met this motherfucker. But he had lived life. This motherfucker was a lawyer in Mexico before he came to you know, study philosophy at UTEP, okay? And he had lived a whole life, dog. And my whole life, I'd always had this mentality, but it never, I never had the words to ascribe to it. And then I met him, and he fucking finally made it clear, dog. He called it pata physics. Why pata? Because for those of you who don't speak Spanish, it means foot. But in this particular sense, it means walking, okay? It's metaphysics, right? The, the metaphysics of walking. The metaphysics, uh, you know, the walking metaphysics, more specifically, to be completely fucking faithful to the language, right? Pata physics, dog. You're walking, you're observing life, you're fucking real, you know, you're, you're making observations about your entire existence because, dog, again, this shit is a fucking trip. Life is a trip. And if you get caught up in the minutia of every day, nine to five, oh, I got to go to work today and clock in on time before the boss breathes down my neck, right? You're going to miss it. You're going to miss every fucking element of it, yo. So this fucking, you know, this pata physics shit is, it was a conscientious acknowledgement like, yo, like, what's the rush, dog? Like, chill, take your time, engage with the people, engage with the fucking surroundings, examine, think, have, take time to, you know, experience yourself, to feel your thoughts, to feel your emotions. Don't be in a rush to fucking get through this shit, dog, because... You're not, there's, there's only so much time, homeboy. And if you're rushing through it, you're rushing through the experience, right? And you're going to run out of time a lot sooner than if you had it, okay? So that's, that's, that's low writing, dog. I just call it low writing now because it's not, A, it sounds cooler than fucking, I'm sorry, right? To the homie, the homie that turned me on to it. Same idea, dog. Your spirit lives on in this idea, okay? Um, but I, I personally think low writing sounds cooler than pata physics, right? Um, but pata physics sounds pretty cool too. Um, but obviously the second reason being is low riding is more fucking, it's more accessible to people. Like I don't have to explain what the fuck is patas, right? And how do you merge it with metaphysics? Like, it's, pata physics is low riding homeboy. Okay. We're roll riding from one fucking, we're low riding across this bitch dog. When we're along the process, we're establishing deep roots. Okay. I'm not fucking just zip zam. Thank you for the, uh, uh, thank you ma'am type shit. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to get to know you dog. That's why I fucks with people who, uh, you know, who reach out to me on, on social media, like, I'll fuck with you, dog. Like, you fuck with me, I'll fuck with you because this isn't just like me throwing shit out there and be like, you listen to what I got to say. Like, nah, dog, that's colonial bullshit. Like, we're in this bitch together. Like, let's vibe, you and me. You know what I'm saying? Let's establish these roots and let's fucking work collectively towards bridging the fucking, to building the bridges between uh, the borderlands that divide us. Morons, I'll do what shit, right? So essentially then, low writing is just a methodology, dog. Low writing is this 
a, a methodology. It's a framework for, you know, investigating the fundamental elements of indigenous culture, right? And in this particular sense that Dylan Miner is talking to us about, to, uh, to us about it's directed more towards the land and the art co component, right? Now, in the case of us Chicanex folks, right, this is embodied, bro. It's embodied. Like, it's just an embodied thing. It's there, dog. It's there. For those of you who are brown and you're still, like, in the fence, like, hmm, do I want to be a Chicano or a Chicana? Or do I want to maintain this bougie conservative Christian culture that I was brainwashed with, right? It's there, yo. Like, it, it, it's in your, it's, it's in the fundamental building blocks of your DNA, okay? We embody this fucking culture, this low writing, right? Through both the historical and contemporary incantation of the Chicanx culture. And that includes everything from Aztlan, Chicanx art, right? And the navigation thereof. Because ultimately what we're doing, dog, as Chicanx peoples is we're traversing our way through the multitude of ancestral migration routes that, you know, they had established long before we got here, dog. Again, I cannot fucking emphasize this, yo. Long before the indigenous, or rather, long before the Europeans got here, yo, our fucking ancestors from all over Turtle Island, they traversed their way through multitudes of ancestral migrational patterns, right? And, you know, these migration routes, they've been in place here on Turtle Island long before Christopher Columbus was found lost at sea, right? So I guess in that respect, I, I know I've given the shout out to the peoples outside of Turtle Island, but yo, for reals, what's up, dog? A special shout out to the motherfuckers. You know, a special shout out goes to the motherfuckers around the planet. I'm not trying to fucking hierarchize, right? But what I'm saying is like, yo, uh, like praises posted up, right? To the various spots of our ancestors, to the indigenous, to our indigenous kin, okay? From all over the different spots where our ancestors laid roots, okay? Laid deep roots tens of thousands of years ago. We gave corn. I say we, our ancestors, dog, our ancestors, okay? It was discovered and developed and fucking perfected in Central Mexico, no, Mexico, Mexico, dog, okay? And our ancestors, they shared this gift with, uh, with your ancestors from all over the fucking earth, sometimes willingly, sometimes not, willingly to the ones here on Turtle Island, okay? Uh, unwillingly to the ones beyond in Europe, but I'm, you know, I'm glad that y'all have it nonetheless, okay? It's a whole ass con different conversation for another day. You might just be thinking, it's just fucking corn, dog, who cares? It's more than just fucking corn, I swear to God, okay? I swear to they don't, I should say more importantly. <laughs> That fucking brainwashing runs so deep. It's just language, bro. Chill the fuck out, right? Anyways, it's a shout out, dog, to my motherfuckers. Chicago, Detroit, the greater Midwest in general, dog. Arizona, New York, New Mexico, right? Utah, Califas, Texas, dog, everywhere. Washington State, like, what's up? I see you and I appreciate the fuck out of you, for reals, okay? Um, You're fucking, you're there because of the ancestral migration patterns. I'm here because of the ancestral migration patterns. Like, it's it's all one, dog. It's all one, right? Um, so the low writing process then, it's this process that allows us to move beyond this basic fucking understanding of Aztlan as this allegedly mythological ancestral home of the Mexica Tenoca to a modern land of becoming. This is the key part, dog. Becoming, okay? That is in a constant state of creation because Teot, right? Everything is Teot. And in this particular sense, it's manifested in us, the Chicanx folks, dog, like we are, they all embodied in Chicanx form. Like, I don't know how much, how much clearer that needs to be. Okay. Now, it's important to emphasize here that this low writing, it is a methodology. Okay. And it's one that allows us again to traverse space, time, and culture. Again, we don't live on the same timelines as our European counterparts, homie. And the concept of time and space travel, it isn't novel. Okay. It's not a novel science fictiony. Uh, science fiction fantasy, I, I should say, okay? It's that, don't get me twisted, it's definitely that, no doubt. But it's also the understanding that we can navigate through both time and space by way of immersion into spaces that we don't currently occupy. And the lowrider dog is the chosen vehicle for doing so, right? Not just again because it's a cultural artifact, but because of the very act of lowriding itself, right? We're not in a rush to get from point A to point B, homeboy. That's why this podcast series <laughs> on modernism from postmodernism, right, is taking such a circuitous route. Like, I'll just fucking talk about all kinds of shit. It's all connected in my head, and I'm getting there slowly but surely and trying to make those connections, but I'm in fucking no rush to do so, dog. I'm low writing across my own ideas, homeboy, right? And it's being concretized through this podcast. We are low riding across Turtle Island. It's being concretized through the ways Chicanx culture is alive and well, has been, 
since the fucking since we were since we emerged as this new indigenous folk okay onto this fucking continent and it will be that way until every last fucking shikanax on this person mystic fucking suddenly were to vanish okay now uh, in terms of, you know, our navigational route, we're not pressed to arrive, homeboy. We're not, again, we're not pressed to complete our business and, you know, be on our way. We're trying to set up roots and connections just the same way our ancestors did when they, you know, introduced the sacred maze to the rest of the continent, right? And I cannot emphasize this enough because this sharing element, it's a vital component of low riding, dog. This is vital, okay? Because specifically, it's a culturally sustaining pedagogy to use fancy fucking teacher talk, Right? Um, and what I mean by that is that instead of teaching that colonial model of you have an empty bank, quote unquote, that needs filling, what culturally relevant pedagogy is concerned with is maintaining cultural practices by incorporating them into teaching, right? Into the teaching system. So in returning back to the book, uh, what Dylan Miner is going to talk about is how this, ex or his own experience rather, of building lowrider bikes with native youth helped him come up with these ideas, right? He tells us specifically. That community collaboration, okay, community collaboration and contemporary culture practices, right, are the locus that maintain indigenous knowledge, right? Um, less and fancy academic way of saying this is just straight up motherfuck academic research, bro, okay? Building lowriders with the help of community youth and elders is just a relevant, uh, 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 is just as relevant a means of producing knowledge. Uh, it's one that, you know, incorporates fundamental features and thus helps preserve the, uh, the, the significance of indigenous culture, such as storytelling, movement, and migration, right? This is just as viable a method of producing knowledge as whatever the fuck the academic dorks think the only, only quote unquote method of doing so is, right? What this is essentially, the indigenous, this indigenous mode of building knowledge, uh, Dylan Miner is going to tell us is it's low writing, dog. Right? Why? Because in building these lowriders, dog, bikes or otherwise, we work collectively and collaboratively. We're maintaining and continuing modes of knowledge and cultural practices that extend far beyond that of European influence, bro. The act of riding these lowriders themselves across these colonized lands is itself an artistic expression of our continued fucking resistance to European conquest, bro. And not only do they build community along the way, but they establish a close connection with the land in which these practices are performed in. Because, right, even, th th think about it, dog, even an act as seemingly inconsequential as low riding is connected to land in some way. How? Just for those of you who are like hip into, a, you know, a low rider culture, but car culture in general, you'll know that, you know, car enthusiasts, uh, they tend to, you know, congregate as all enthusiasts of any fucking, you know, thing in life. <laughs> Um, and in this particular case, their congregation happens to revolve around the practice of actually driving their vehicles. In low riding culture, this is referred to a cruise, dog. You cruise down with the oldies in El Paso. You go down to Oscar at the park. It's a cruise, right? It's a little lake, a man-made lake here in El Paso. Motherfuckers take their whips out there, usually mostly low riders, but also other dope little whips, right? And they just cruise, dog. And the whole time you're there, there's fucking... People barbecuing, they're grilling out. It's asadas, homeboy. Are you welcome to the asada or not? Are you invited to the asada or not? It depends on how down for the hood you are, okay? You have motherfuckers out there throwing down their uh, their asadas, and they're all bumping oldies music, dog. It's Sunday oldies, okay? It's always on a Sunday, and we're always listening to fucking oldies. That's Chicano culture, yo, okay? And uh, the part, the emphasis of the whips, then, of the lowriders, is that part of that fucking environment is part of that you know that experience more importantly is the the, the driving of the vehicle you, you don't fucking speed you drive slow homie to you know to quote that kanye west song because you want motherfuckers to see your whip dog you spend so much time money effort blood sweat and tears in putting it into that motherfucker that the last thing you want to do is speed by from point a to point z just to fucking finish the cruise like nah dog Low and slow, homeboy. Ain't nobody going more than five miles an hour in these cruises. It's annoying if you get stuck behind them. But if you're in there experiencing it, it's like, damn, check out that whip, dog. Motherfucker bouncing that shit, the lowrider, right? Um, it's just an entire experience. You got the oldies bumping. You got the fucking the cookout going, right? That's part of the Chicanx culture. And in this particular sense, I just attached a significance of land to it, namely Ascara de Park here in El Paso. So you can see then how uh, 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 something as fluid as the Shikanex culture of lowriding that emerged organically, right, itself attached itself to fucking land. And you'll see how it's being 
fucking policed when you see everywhere around your city for sure probably but definitely in mine where they say no cruise zone like you're not welcome to cruise your vehicles here because it, it is kind of annoying if you get stuck behind one I'm, I'm just gonna be honest right um so you see the policing of land that's tied directly to a fucking Chicanx culture practice, namely that of low riding. It's there, homeboy. You're just fucking intellectually lazy and you don't want to look either out of convenience sake or because you're just a fucking bum, right? Now, despite the clearly already materializing indigenous foundation for and influence of these practices, motherfuckers will still insist that we ain't indigenous, bro. Now... This is interesting in one respect because, again, the lowrider itself can be seen as a metaphor, if you will. It's our fucking spaceship to traverse time and space, dog, right? But it's also a metaphor for the rationale, right? As they can be critiqued as nothing more, if you will, than hybrid or mestizo artifacts that combine indigenous and settler ways of knowing the uh, Chicanx pop culture. Again, the hipsters. They always call us hipsters. I'll call it pop culture. That's all what these little fake woke bitch ass Latinx dorks always say, right? Um, and this is unfortunately exactly how the quote unquote Chicano study folk themselves see this. So already we start to see this little hatred within our community. I hate you, but it's beef. It's a schism, dog. The Chicanx folks, there's a big schism between them, their fucking played out ideas, and us Chicanx folks in our fucking new shit, right? It's just always the way within cultures, like, okay, boomer type shit, right? Anyways, this is one of those distinctions because the Chicanx folks or the Chicano folks, right? Um, that's the way they see it. They see this as a fucking, as a uh, Chicano culture, as a, a, a hybrid, if you will, of indigenous, you know, Mexican, quote unquote, culture and fucking this new European culture, right? Specifically because they embrace what is referred to as mestizaje, okay? Um, but again, as I've already mentioned before, this mestizaje, realistically, it's nothing more than a fucking low key way of perpetuating white colonialism, dog, and brown skin, right? Why? Because mestizaje is extremely homophobic, it's extremely transphobic, it's extremely misogynistic, and it's completely fucking anti-black and other other uh, fucking ethnicity. Like, let's just be real with it, dog. It's fucking predicated around Catholicism. Like, get the fuck out of here. Catholicism and Christianity in general is completely antithetical to the fucking Ch uh, Chicano, uh, indigenous Nahua approach. You know what I'm saying? They fucking killed our ancestors, though. How the fuck can you even try to defend that argument? I just don't understand. Anyways... Basically, what they're going to say is that what happens is, I should say, and this is why this is one of the many beefs that I have with academia, is mestizaje is the official fucking accepted Chicano studies in academia, right? Um, and it's, it shouldn't be surprising why, though. I just told you, right? What mestizaje is is nothing more than fucking white idealized uh, uh, European ideas of an essentialized identity, namely that of Chicano people, right? Like I've been saying, yo. These fucking fools, they're all Nazis, bro. And they're all obsessed with this racial purity nonsense, okay? Which has, you know, it's been internalized, unfortunately, by brown folk who, who, you can see your own fucking kind calling blood quantum on you, dog. Like, the Nazis are in brown skin, okay, at this point. They're also in the white skin, though. Don't forget those motherfuckers either. So basically what I'm trying to say, dog, is that this concept of mestizaje is created by brown folk who wants to take part in this essentialized system. They want to be part of that system. And since it comfortably fits within this European colonial framework, it's allowed. It's allowed in they schools, dog. And because of that, it becomes canonical and is thus considered to be quote unquote true, to which I continuously state, Azo Tleneli in Tlaltic Pak. Is this the only truth on earth, homeboy? Because if you ask me, it's not. In fact, this fucking idea of mestizaje is fucking nonsense and is why one of the main points of hood philosophy is the insistence. It's the insistence, dog. That academia as an institutional authority and alleged keeper and producer of knowledge, it's no epistemic authority when it comes to matters of the quote unquote truth, bro. Like seriously, you call me Kid Cudi up in this motherfucker because I'm screaming now, fuck that, fuck that. And the reason, of course, is because as I've mentioned before, culture is not static, bro. Like all things animated by Teo, it's a dynamic force that is in constant flux and subject to change. This holds absolutely true for indigeneity. This indigeneity shit is not some stagnant cultural category defined by Europeans and the little fucking fake woke social justice warriors they've brainwashed, right, in they schools, universities. It's a fucking inextinguishable right of indigenous peoples to self-determine who and what they are, dog. 
for indigenous peoples to govern ourselves, okay, and to define our own cultural and aesthetic systems, our own knowledge, our own aesthetics, okay? This is ultimately the fucking point of indigenizing, bro. It's about self-determination, which means that neither the Mexica, the Spanish, the Mexican, or the Europeans can tell us what the fuck a Shika next person is and isn't. And they for fuck sure cannot exterminate the Shika next indigeneity and sovereignty, bro. Now, when attacked like this, some of them in the indigenous community will insist, though some of them being these little fake woke social justice warriors, little fucking Latinx dorks, they are going to insist that their logic isn't informed by settler colonial logic, right? But this just simply isn't true, dog. It's just not true, okay? Because at the root of this is nothing more, again, than colonial colonial political formations that attempt to render the Chicanex presence as immigrant, quote-unquote, and therefore settler, quote-unquote, for those of you who are only listening. And this is simply not true, dog. We are not fucking immigrants, and we fuck sure aren't settlers. You know who is immigrant and settlers? European people, dog, okay? Let's not fucking confuse that for one second. Us detribalized Chicanex peoples, we are every bit as native to this land as our tribalized kin. And ain't no fucking fake woke social justice warrior dog gonna tell me otherwise, okay? With that understanding, we start to come a little bit more closer to this conceptualization of Aztlan as both an idea and a space, right? Namely in terms of how we could see it as a creation, dog. It's a creation that is in constant flux according to the way it is engaged with by Chicanex peoples like you, me, and, you know, others as well who are creating and sustaining it, okay? Uh, Miner's got this really dope quote, dog, and I'm probably going to leave you with this because even though I got some more pages left, like this is already over an hour long, and I'm trying to be mindful of your time, okay? So uh, I'll finish it up with this quote and some last thoughts, but he quotes actually uh, an indigenous martyr, dog, by the name of Louis Rio, uh, who states that my people will sleep for 100 years, but when they awaken, it will be the artists who give them back their spirit, okay? So to that end, creating Aztlan should be seen as a work of art, okay? It's a work of art that is aimed at giving spirit back to an indigenous people, us, the Chicanex people, okay? Who have been denied indig indigenous sovereignty through settler colonial society. The last thing these fucking settler colonialists want is us to wake up and reclaim our ancestral land because the jig is up. So of course they're going to fucking brainwash peoples in their universities to make us feel like us brown people, us detribalized and dispossessed peoples aren't indigenous because it goes along the process of them doing so, of continuing to fucking maintain their colonial structure, to continue to maintain their grip on the land. And the whole point of the indigenous movement is land fucking back, okay? We're going to demand the land back. There's plenty of land to go around. It's not a fucking competition, dog, okay? It's not us versus us. It's us versus the greater fucking, uh, 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 not the greater, but rather the collective uh, European whole, the collective uh, colonial European whole is what I should say, right? We are, in, this, in essence, dog, reclaiming our Chicano indigenous spirit, okay? It's a work of art, homeboy, and it should be treated as such. You can see a little bit of the Nietzschean roots there in that particular philosophy, but it's not even... I'm, that's not even me imposing that. Like, that's not even them reading Nietzsche and coming up with that. It's them organically low riding through life and realizing this shit is a work of art, dog. And we're gonna have to be the ones as artists, okay, of all sorts of traits, whether it be fucking, you know, painting, singing, sculpting, dancing, philosophizing, writing, all that kind of shit, right? It's us, our job, just as an individual person living an artistic life to fucking bring Aztlan to life, right? And yeah, like I said, plenty more to go, but I'm in no rush to get from point A to point B, dog. So I'll go ahead and end this bitch now. Wish you a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>